How's it going ladies and gentlemen, my name is Kaz and it is no secret that C++ is a complex language. What used to just be C with classes has turned into an almost unrecognizable beast. With each new standard comes new keywords and new features. To help you cope with this and to avoid your inevitable midlife crisis, today we're going to talk about the four different constant related keywords, namely const, constexper, constival, and constinet. Each one of these keywords serves a specific purpose and even if you think you understand them, I suggest you stick around because you might learn something new. Also, if you'd like to support the channel, I'd really appreciate it if you checked out my Patreon down below. And it doesn't hurt to drop a like and subscribe if you do enjoy the content. Regardless, let's get into it. Throughout your time programming, you will come across variables with values that never change. For example, the value of pi, the acceleration due to gravity, or even the speed of light. These are known collectively as constants, and as the name suggests, they are meant to remain constant throughout the lifetime of your program. They are immutable. Naturally, this is very important as you don't want to accidentally change the speed of light, although it would be funny. Constants also don't have to be so explicit. For example, take the following function. All it does is add two integers, but it is important to note that we don't want this function to modify the values that we pass to it. Therefore, it wouldn't hurt to make these parameters constant. This way, the compiler will warn us if we accidentally try to change the values. All of this leads us to the const keyword. So let's begin there. The most important thing to know about the const keyword in C++ is that it is nothing more than a promise. It is literally just a promise to the compiler that I will not change this value. You can compile with or without constants and the result will most probably be the same. What makes this even weirder is that C++ has something called a const cast, which will literally allow you to throw away the constants of any variable. So this begs the question, what's the point of using const if it basically means nothing? Well, great question, and I'm glad you asked. The answer is simple. The const keyword exists for you, the programmer. If you mark something as const and then try to change it, your program will not compile. Simple as that. If you want to change a constant, you are forced to do it very explicitly with a const cast, which lets everyone know exactly what you are doing. Using const will also make your code easier to read and understand as it makes your intentions very clear. This methodology is known as const correctness, and it does not hurt to take a few notes. There is one more thing to mention though. Performance. By marking your variables as const, the compiler now also knows your intentions and might be able to optimize a few things out here and there, which is always a great benefit. Since we're on the topic of performance though, I think it's time to move on to our next keyword. The constexpr keyword has to be one of the most interesting parts of the C++ language. It was introduced back in C++11, and ever since then, we have been able to do runtime work at compile time in a type safe manner. If you have no clue what I just said, let me try explain. Over here, we are looking at a wonderful little function that calculates the area of a circle. Now, there is a glaring problem with this function in that we have hard-coded the value of pi into it. This is not great because it means that each time I want to use the value of pi, I have to type out that number, which is not only inconvenient, but also inaccurate. Furthermore, if this were a more complex number, like the speed of sound, it would be almost impossible to know what this function was doing. With all of that being said though, there is one benefit to hard-coding numbers like this. It is extremely efficient. Hard-coding numbers means that they are baked into the machine code. They do not need to be pushed and popped from the stack or sent in and out of registers. They are already where they need to be in the program. Now, since we've just spoken about the const keyword, your solution to our problem over here might be as simple as creating a global pi variable, which is constant. This is a decent solution because at least now the magic number has a name, but you need to understand that this is a runtime solution. This function will only know the value of pi once your program is up and running because it is stored in a variable, which is elsewhere in memory. This is a damn shame because each time you call this function, it'll cost a couple extra CPU cycles to fetch the value from the variable. Since the beginning of time, programmers have been getting around this problem by using macros. By defining the word pi as the value we want, we can now use pi as if it were a variable, and when you go to compile your program, the preprocessor will substitute each instance of the word pi with the number. This means that the value will basically be hard-coded into our program, even though it has a name in our code, which is great, right? Well, there is still an issue. The preprocessor is not only limited in what it can do, but also when you write macros, you are not writing C or C++ code. You are actually writing code that writes code, if that makes sense, which is some meta bullshit. These two mix like oil and water. Well, they don't mix at all, which, which is a problem. And this is why the constexpr keyword was created. The word constexpr is a portmanteau of constant expression, and constant expressions are special because they have the possibility of being evaluated at compile time. 
By making pi a const expert double, we have created the perfect solution, as this variable will be replaced wherever needed when you compile, which gives us the best possible performance. It is also fully standard C++, which means the rest of the language can make use of this variable. Now, if that is not cool enough, what if I told you that you can make functions const expert too? For the bright among you, that means that you can write functions that essentially get called by your compiler long before your code ever runs. Then the results get hard coded into your program, which is just mind blowing. To prove to you how cool this is, we can get the area of any circle long before our program even runs. In this example, when compiled with full optimizations in release, our area function is never called. Instead, the area of a circle with a radius of 20 is computed at compile time and hard-coded into our program. Now, this is great and all, but I haven't been fully transparent with you. Marking something as const expert does not guarantee that it will be evaluated at compile time. It only guarantees that it can be evaluated at compile time. It is actually up to the compiler's discretion as to whether or not compile time computation takes place. With that being said, it is time to move on to our next keyword. If you have a function that absolutely must be evaluated at compile time, then the const eval keyword is your friend. Where const expert states that an expression can be evaluated at compile time, const eval says that it has to be. It is important to note that const expert works with both functions and variables, whereas const eval only exists to make immediate functions. You cannot have a const eval variable. Since const eval functions have to be evaluated at compile time, to store a result from a const eval function, you need a constant expression like so. This will force the compiler to compute your function at compile time. This keyword was only added very recently in the C++ plus 20 standards, so don't expect to see it around very much, at least for the next few years. It is a great addition to the language, as over the years, the const expert keyword has gotten less and less strict, to the point where you can't really tell whether a function was or was not evaluated at compile time. Therefore, this keyword gives us a surefire way to make compile time functions. Anyway, let's move on to the last keyword that we are going to cover in this video. This is constant. Like constval, it was added very recently in C++20, but it is quite a nuanced little feature. You can only apply it to variables and it ensures that a variable has to be initialized at compile time. Interestingly, constant has nothing to do with making variables constant. We know that when you mark a variable as const, you cannot modify it. And the same goes for const expert variables, where immutability is implied. The constant keyword has none of that crap. All it cares about is that a static variable has a value at compile time. In the following code, we have two functions. One returns a string at runtime and the other returns a string at compile time. This program will not compile because we have marked dynamic var as being compile time initialized when that is not possible because the function will only return the string when we run the program at runtime. Whereas static var is using a compile time evaluated function, which ensures that this variable will have a value when we compile our program. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that just about wraps up the video. I hope you enjoyed it and maybe you learned something new. Let me know what videos or topics you'd like to see in the future by leaving a comment down below. And if you did enjoy the video, please feel free to drop a like and subscribe. If you want access to my source code from other videos, check out the Patreon down below and I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers and peace out.